Hey folks, welcome to Weiss Advice powered by BeatStars.com. This video is gonna be about multi-band compression. But before I get into that, gotta give a special shout out to Placebo Beats for letting me use this record to demonstrate these ideas. And before we get started, in order to understand this little lesson, we're gonna need to know some stuff about compression and we're gonna need to know some stuff about EQ. So if you don't already have a foundation in that, hop over to my primer videos in compression and EQ respectively and check those out first, then come back Back here so that some of the jargon will make a little bit more sense. All right, so what is multi-band compression? Multi-band compression is one of those things that's sometimes put up on a pedestal as being like the solution to making records great. And I'm gonna start by telling you it's not, but it is a very useful tool for very specific applications. Multi-band compression combines the idea of EQ along with the idea of compression. So functionally, it works exactly like a typical compressor will work, where you have a threshold that you set and a ratio that determines how much compression we're going to do, and then attack and release times that determine how fast we're going to do it. However, unlike typical compression, multiband focuses on a single band of frequencies, so maybe everything above 1K, or everything between 200 hertz and 800 hertz. We can target specific frequency bands, and that gives us certain flexibility that compression by itself just doesn't give us. So I'm gonna pull up an example here using this record. I'm gonna focus on a drum loop that contains both a hi-hat and a snare. And I'm going to show you how I can bring out the snare using EQ, and then I'm going to compare that to how I can bring out the snare using multi-band compression. But let's start by hearing the complete record. So that little snare in that loop back there, and you barely really notice it when the whole record is going, but it's kind of got a cool thing happening. Now, just to begin, I'm gonna do a, a little bit of EQ and balancing that I set up beforehand and compare it with the multiband I did beforehand, and then I'm gonna break down the steps. So here's with conventional EQ, where I'm bringing out the frequency range that the snare is primarily living in, while I'm taming down the hi-hat range a little bit so that the snare comes up relative to the hat. And that sounds like this. Right, I've clearly emphasized the snare quite a bit. And then to get the hi-hat back up to the proportionate level, I've added about two and a half dB of gain on the back end of that. And now here's how that sounds in the record. It's certainly not bad. We now have the snare, it's present, it exists, it's fulfilling that groove that it, it was kind of missing before, and I like it, not terrible. It is a little muddy and it is a little bit overly round and soft feeling, so maybe this is not the exact best way to go about it. Now I'm gonna switch over from the EQ version to the multiband compression version. And you hear how there's a clear emphasis on the attack of the snare. It now has more bite to it, and it has a sort of dimensionality that it didn't have before. And I'm using some compression techniques to enhance the way the snare is actually punching, not just simply turning up the level of it. Now let's listen to that in the context of the mix. Notice how the snare, while it's now proportionate to how it was when I used Simple EQ, is sitting in a better way. It's not as muddy, it's got more of a snap to it, it's a little bit more articulated. This is why we can sometimes use multiband compression to get an exact result that we want. So I'm gonna go over the ideas of what I was doing here and I'm going to recreate it. But basically, I'm using various compression techniques that I discussed in a previous video where I'm taming certain parts of the frequency band using fast compression with a fast release. And then I'm also enhancing some of the frequency band by using very slow compression with a medium release to build up that attack. All right, let's recreate this idea. Uh, I'm going to move this down. And we're going to do this from scratch, so I'm going to pull up a new multiband compressor. And let's solo up our loop. All 
All right, so the first thing I want to do is I want to make sure that I'm taming the hat. So I'm going to mute the low and mid band here on this multiband. I'm going to focus just on this top band. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of try and isolate where just the hat is living. The default position really just gives us the absolute top end, and there's a lot more of the hi-hat itself that's existing a little bit lower. So that's our hat. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some pretty fast attack, and I'm going to use some medium release, and I'm going to use a medium ratio where it defaults to. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lower the snap of the hat a little bit. I'm going to lower the hat overall, but I'm just going to sort of tame it and round it out a bit. We don't need to go crazy. I just want to soften the bite of the hat itself. Now we're going to switch over to the low band. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the low band so that we're hearing most of the snare. There we go. So this is primarily snare now that's living in my low band. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the attack very slow. I'm going to set the release to a medium release sort of on the faster side. And I'm going to set a hard knee. And I'm going to start lowering the threshold so that I can start clamping down here on the snare. But what's going to happen is because the attack is so slow, it's going to allow the initial transient of the snare to poke through. You can hear how what's really happening is I'm actually losing sustain on the snare, but the snare itself, the attack of the snare, the stick of the snare is popping through just as loud as it was before. Now, I think I'm doing a little bit too much compression here, so I need to, either need to raise the threshold or back off the ratio or maybe some combination of both. And now what I'm going to do is apply makeup gain to this section of the snare so that the body now has more snap to it. There we go. And I'm going to bring in my other bands. So this is without the multiband compression. Here's with. Can you hear how I've not only changed the proportion of the snare to the hi-hat, but I've also changed the texture, the attack of the snare itself so that it cuts and it has more bite to it? That's a really important distinction here. I'm shaping not only the frequency realm, but I'm shaping the dynamic realm at the same time. One more time. Before. Now, if I go before without any balancing, that's where we started. Here's where we ended. So maybe I'm a little bit louder than I was before. I'm going to take off half a dB, but listen to the placement of the hi-hat. Try to isolate in your mind just the level of the hi-hat itself and then listen to the level of the snare and how it changes. Ideally, we're keeping the hat kind of in the same place, but we're bringing out the hit and impact of the snare. Before. After. Now 
Maybe not quite. Let's uh, let's back this off yet another half dB, and let's add in a little pinch more gain in the low band. Okay, that feels pretty close. There we go. And now let's listen to it in the context of the mix. Again, listen to how the hat stays in the same place, but the snare really changes in terms of how it's living. Now with it. And there's a little bit more mid-range showing up from the hat itself, so I might need to do one further adjustment and just dip a little bit of that particularly aggressive mid-range tone that's probably around 2 or 3K. There we go, perfect. So I had to sort of tighten it up just a little bit with EQ in order to get it to be just right, but here we've got a much stronger result than if we were to just use purely EQ. And I'll go back to that real quick just so we can put an ear on it. It's just EQ and here is with the multiband compression. Much better. All right, so now let's play around with some multiband compression on the master channel and use that as a means of getting things to sort of jump forward and feel louder and bigger and more impactful, but without changing the things we don't want to change. So when I listen to this mix, To me, I don't feel like I need any more fullness in the kick or in the hat. The two extremes are sitting where they need to sit. All of those synths in the middle could be a little denser and a little bit more forward. So that's what I'm going to focus on. I'm gonna pull up a multiband compression uh, compressor here, and I'm going to try to isolate just that region of the mid-range that ignores the top end as well as the kick drum. There we go, it's pretty accurate right there. Let's set my other crossover points. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some gentle compression to just kind of glue everything together and allow me to sort of control the peaks so that I can move that entire region of frequencies forward in the mix. So I'm sort of just playing around with the time constants to get the exact sort of flavor of compression that I want. I don't want a perfectly hard knee because it feels a little overly aggressive. It's gonna make it harsh to listen to. So I'm backing off the knee ever so slightly, but only as slightly as I need to, to kind of soften the attack of things and kind of tame down the upper part of the mid range, just enough so it's not gonna be harsh. Now in terms of the attack and release, I wanna control the peaks, but allow the feeling of the transients to pop through. So I'm gonna go for as long of an attack time as possible, as slow as an, of an attack time as possible, while still keeping the peaks in check. You hear how the, the peaks on the synths are starting to even pop through now? We've gone a little too far with the attack. And for my release time, because I want density and forwardness, I want as fast of a release time as possible, but without incurring any kind of distortion and without making it so dense that the record doesn't breathe. Yeah. 
And because this is like big room club kind of EDM, I, I do think I can sort of go a little bit more on the overly dense side of things. This is not like audiophile music I'm going for. This is something that's supposed to impact people and just hit them hard and be a little ignorant uh, and really translate well over club speakers. So I think going a little bit more on the dense side is the better choice than being like really delicate with the sonics of things. So, you know, I'm, I'm at a pretty fast release point here. Perfect. Now what I want to do is start adjusting my ratio and my threshold to sort of just act over the exact correct region. I feel like my threshold is probably around in the right place and I just have the ratio way too high. I think going for, especially on master channels, usually working within very light ratios is fine and I think we're going to get the kind of compression that we need. Great, perfect, there we go. So now I'm going to apply some makeup gain. And I'm gonna put the low band and the high band both into bypass mode. So there's this is not even gonna be passing through the actual compression mechanism. And it's because I wanna leave these as unaffected as possible. So now, listening to the whole thing, I can A, B it, and what I wanna hear is for the overall level of the kick and hat to kinda of stay in the same place, but I want the mid-range to pop forward and make the overall record feel bigger. So here's the before. I think we accomplished our goal. So we can use the multiband on the master channel to take the stuff that's already working perfectly and leave it alone and just contour the things that could be a little bit bigger and bolder. Now there are definitely some other ways that we can do this. We can use traditional compression and we can take the low end out of the signal uh, in the detector circuit. That's another way to go about it. There's certainly multiple ways to skin a cat when it comes to bringing the mid-range forward in a pleasing way on the master channel. This just happens to be a really effective one, and I wanted to make sure that you could see it so that you could apply these ideas to other things. For example, we might want to take this same exact concept and maybe apply it to like a group of synths, or take this same concept and apply it to all of the drums summed together so that we can kind of shape things dynamically and glue them together. All right, guys, till next time.